All right, uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to lecture number 11 of the 2020 uh, Advanced Earthquake and Tsunami Hazards Training Course. Uh, my name is Sean Hutchings, and I am a geophysicist with the uh, U.S. Geological Survey um, at the Earthquake Science Center in Menlo Park, California. And I am uh, very excited to be uh, continuing our investigation of seismicity of Indonesia, uh, this time focusing on shallow and crustal seismicity. So a quick outline for how our um, presentation will go. I'll begin with the review of the Indonesian tectonic setting, as well as the uh, seismicity distribution. And then we'll jump right into uh, investigating the, shallow, the sources of shallow seismicity, which, in, uh, which include megathrust, inch slab, and uh, crustal sources. And then we'll close out with a quick summary. So let's go ahead and uh, start with a quick uh, tectonic review. Uh, so Indonesia, once again, rely, uh, lies at the intersection of uh, triple point convergence between the Indo-Australian Indo plate here in the south, uh, the, Sun the Sunda plate, and uh, the Pacific plate, which bro broadly includes the uh, Philippine Sea and Caroline plates. Uh, so in the south, the uh, Indo-Australian plate converges to the north um, with the Sunda and Pacific plates, uh, subducting within the Sunda Java Trench uh, with collision uh, active in the Timor Trough area and uh, uh, convergence being uh, complexly partitioned amongst uh, several microplates here. Um, and uh, in the northeast, uh, convergence is primarily between the Sunda and Philippine Sea plates, where the Philippine Sea plate uh, subducts within the uh, Philippine Trench. Uh, so remember, in these uh, relative motions, will be useful as we uh, continue to investigate uh, shallow seismicity, uh, primarily using uh, focal mechanisms. Uh, which, uh, as a reminder, uh, uh, the majority of uh, Indonesian seismicity is uh, concentrated at or near the plate boundaries. Um, and focal mechanisms uh, uh, very complexly show the how the uh, uh, tectonic motions are being accommodated uh, throughout the region. Um, so during this presentation, we will uh, look in greater detail at uh, how focal mechanisms uh, relate to uh, the broader tectonic motions. So as a quick reminder, uh, focal mechanisms are stereographic representations of two mathematically equivalent fault planes uh, over, uh, over which slip occurred in the event of an earthquake um, and also indicate the type of slip that occurred. So in the case of this uh, strike slip fault shown here, uh, the highlighted fault is the dextral sense, um, and shaded regions indicate compression, whereas the non-shaded regions indicate tension. Uh, so each of the primary fault types can be expressed by these beach balls, um, and uh, oblique slip is uh, any combination of either the dip slip mechanisms with strike slip. So during this presentation, so we'll be uh, plotting focal mechanisms um, and investigating uh, specific areas, um, primarily plotting focal mechanisms from the Global Centroid Moment Tensor Project uh, catalog, so GCMT. Uh, the data set is uh, from a 20-year period, so including this uh, past summer and extending into uh, uh, back toward uh, to January 1st, 2000, uh, for all events of magnitude 4.0 and greater. And, uh, any individual events uh, that are presented as examples uh, will be from the U.S. Uh, Geological Survey Earthquake Catalog. And then, of course, uh, plate boundaries are obtained from the uh, updated digital plate model of plate boundaries by uh, Peter Bird, uh, 2003. All right, so a quick, uh, quick review on uh, how earthquakes are uh, distributed with depth. I uh, remember this from uh, part two, sorry, from part one of our uh, um, of our uh, uh, investigation of Indonesia, Indonesian seismicity. Uh, the black curve uh, represents the uh, Indonesian region as a whole, um, where each of the colored curves represent uh, uh, different subregions. And really the most important part uh, to get from this graph again is uh, that the majority of earthquakes that occur per year um, are shallow uh, and occur at typically uh, at depth uh, less than 50 kilometers. Um, so this is important. Uh, and as we investigate uh, shallow seismicity. So shallow seismicity is generally uh, anything less than uh, 100 kilometers uh, depth. Um, and in the, in the Indonesian region, uh, the primary sources include megathrust, uh, which occurs at the uh, shallow plate boundary, uh, so, so shallow plate interface between the subducting and overriding plates in the subduction zone. 
uh, intraslab, uh, which occurs within the subducting uh, slab itself, um, and then also crustal faulting, uh, which does not occur within the uh, subduction zone, but rather in the component plates. Um, and for this, for, uh, for this presentation, uh, anything uh, less than 50 kilometers will uh, include crustal uh, faulting. So if we begin first uh, by uh, investigating megathrust events. Uh, so megathrust events occur, once again occur at the shallow plate interface, uh, typically between uh, 20 and 50 kilometers uh, depth within the subduction zones. And uh, um, due to their large rupture, surf, uh, potential for large rupture surfaces can generate uh, very large magnitude events, uh, to, uh, usually those exceeding uh, magnitude 8.0. Um, so the majority of megathrusting in the Indonesia, uh, shown here, so these are events uh, of magnitude 7.0 and up. Uh, so the majority of these megathrusts are concentrated within uh, the Sunda Java Trench, um, with uh, some uh, some events also occurring at the uh, North Sulawesi Trench here, uh, like this uh, event in 2008, um, as well as some events in the uh, New Guinea Trench, which have not been labeled here. So the largest event um, that has occurred in this region is the magnitude uh, 9.1 uh, Great Sumatra Indomin uh, event in December of 2004, um, which this animation shows the uh, seismic waves propagating from the source. Uh, so this event occurred as a result of uh, shallow thrust faulting at the interface between the uh, Burma microplate and the uh, subducting Indo-Australian plate. Uh, it occurred at a focal depth of approximately 30 kilometers, um, and finite fault modeling uh, indicates that the uh, event ruptured several uh, segments of the subduction zone um, along a length within the trench of approximately 1,300 to 1,500 kilometers, and a total rupture area of approximately 250,000 square kilometers. Um, the maximum uh, the maximum slip was approximately 20 meters. Um, and the event uh, uh, generated very strong ground shaking uh, that lasted approximately eight and a half minutes, um, as well as a 30 meter high, uh, very destructive tsunami. Um, so this event uh, registers as either the third or fourth highest uh, magnitude uh, event ever recorded by seismometer, um, and also is uh, one of the most destructive, uh, resulting in a, uh, over 200,000 uh, fatalities. So this event is also, uh, so events of this size also have the uh, capacity to greatly change the um, stress conditions within the subduction zone itself and also the uh, surrounding crust. Um, so therefore increasing the likelihood of uh, another rupture uh, nearby, such as uh, the magnitude 8.6 uh, uh, that occurred just to the uh, southeast of uh, the great magnitude 9.1 event uh, in March of 2005, so approximately three, three months afterwards. Um, and this has been determined to have been induced by uh, stress, change, uh, stress changes um, following the great uh, magnitude 9.1 event. So this event uh, ruptured another uh, 400 kilometers within the, within the trench. Um, it did generate a tsunami uh, that was not nearly as uh, destructive uh, due to it uh, propagating out into the Indian Ocean primarily. So this is a so this is a good example of how megathrust events can uh, also lead to other megathrust events um, and several other uh, events that have occurred farther south, um, such as the uh, magnitude 8.4 um, off the coast of southern Sumatra in 2007, um, and the magnitude 7.7 .7, um, off the coast off the coast of uh, western uh, Java um, in 2006. Um, just further attest to the uh, um, activity um, within the, uh, the Sunda Java Trench, um, and that this uh, subduction zone can uh, has the ability to generate large and, often, at least over the past 20 years, very frequent uh, megathrusting events. So another uh, source of seismicity within subduction zones, uh, shallow source, uh, shallow intraslab uh, deformation. Um, so as we remember, uh, shallow uh, so intraslab reflects uh, deformation within the uh, subducting slab, it's slab itself. Um, and these events are typically con constrained to about uh, 20 to 60 kilometers depth, um, although some events uh, can occur uh, deeper. 
Um, and these, uh, what's interesting about these events is that they occur directly below the active megathrust interface. Um, so they have the capacity to uh, change the stress conditions both on the other underlying, uh, on the overlying megathrust, um, which uh, could uh, result later in a uh, large megathrusting event. Uh, and vice versa, megathrust events can also uh, change the, st uh, trust the, st the stress state on these uh, uh, for these uh, and generate uh, inter inter slab events. So um, these uh, events can also be uh, quite uh, damaging and uh, larger magnitude by themselves, um, such as the uh, magnitude 7.9 in Ghana earthquake in June 2000. Um, and a particularly good example is the magnitude 7.6 Padan earthquake in uh, 2009. Um, so these uh, these events uh, pose a greater seismic hazard, obviously due to their uh, shallow uh, focal depth. So if we look at the uh, magnitude 2000, uh, magnitude 7.6 uh, Padang earthquake in 2009, uh, this event res resulted as a um, from slip on uh, oblique uh, with a oblique re re reverse fault uh, mechanism um, at approximately 80 kilometers depth. And uh, what's interesting is that this uh, uh, this mechanism differs uh, quite uh, quite a bit from the uh, predominantly uh, northwest southeast uh, striking thrust mechanisms that are uh, prevalent throughout the uh, uh, subduction zone. So, what's the uh, uh, reason for this uh, different orientation? Uh, because it's this similar orientation also shows up with the uh, magnitude 7.9 in Ghana earthquake, and also the uh, magnitude 6.9 uh, Tugu uh, earthquake here in, in uh, 2019. So if you remember from part one, uh, intraslab events, so an important factor in uh, intraslab uh, faulting is uh, any pre-existing uh, fractures or faults that exist within the uh, slab prior to subduction. So in the case of, uh, the, of, the, of the magnitude 7.6 in Padang, uh, studies indicate that this uh, is the result of uh, rupture on a pre-existing strike slip fault system uh, that was uh, within the oceanic lithosphere. Uh, prior to subduction, and then during subduction was rotated to its current orientation. Um, and what's particularly interesting about this event um, also is that it occurred um, it occurred below a apparently seismically locked uh, section of the megathrust uh, in this area here, um, which has also been determined from paleoseismological evidence. So um, as uh, we know that um, uh, Shallow intra slab events can influence the state, state of stress on the megathrust uh, above. Um, the implications here is that uh, a large megathrust event uh, could follow in the future um, uh, due, to, due to this event. Um, but even by themselves, uh, these events can be quite damaging um, as, the, uh, as the Padang event and also the Ngano event uh, cause significant damage to uh, coastal communities. So beyond um, subduction-related uh, uh, seismicity, uh, crustal seismicity is also a very uh, prevalent source of seismicity throughout uh, Indonesia. Um, so crustal seismicity obviously uh, does not occur within uh, the subduction zone, but rather in the uh, component plates, um, and exhibit a variety of focal mechanisms depending on the uh, tectonic motions, uh, uh, the local tectonic motions. Um, and also, uh, these events uh, do have the capacity to reach uh, large magnitudes, exceeding those of magnitude 7.0, the largest of which, on rare, uh, on the rare occasions, uh, can exceed magnitude 8.0, um, the most recent of which is the magnitude 8.6 uh, in April of 2012 off the coast of uh, northwestern Sumatra here. Uh, so this event is the result of shallow strike slip faulting uh, that occurred within a reactivated fracture zone that was present within the uh, oceanic lithosphere of the Indian plate, of uh, the Indo-Australian plate, um, likely a remnant of uh, older seafloor spreading. And uh, uh, this event was uh, also preceded um, by a similar event in January of that same year, magnitude 7.2, um, and then followed the same day um, by a new magnitude 8.2 um, to the southwest, um, and all of which have uh, very similar mechanisms, um, which is uh, sinistral in a uh, uh, sheer sense. 
Um, so these events have been uh, uh, determined to be the result of uh, so basically these are co-seismic events uh, related to stress changes due to the uh, magnitude 9.1 uh, Sumatra and Demon uh, earthquake, which is right here. Um, so this is a good example of how uh, large uh, mega thrusting events um, can greatly change um, stress states throughout uh, the surrounding crust, not just within the subduction zone, um, and uh, thus can uh, increase seismicity as well. Yes, so result of stress changes, good. All right, so if we move uh, inboard of the trench here, so this is uh, uh, looking at the um, island of Sumatra. Uh, there's a prominent uh, fault zone that runs the uh, basically the uh, length of the island here um, that is roughly traceable by shallow strikes of uh, uh, focal mechanisms. Uh, and this is the approximate location of the Great Sumatran Fault. Um, so the Great Sumatran Fault is a uh, dextral, so it uh, uh, accommodates the dextral uh, component of oblique convergence between the Indo-Australian plate and the Sunda plates, uh, because uh, here oblique co uh, uh, convergence becomes more and more oblique. And uh, it is divided into 19 active segments, typically. Um, they're discontinuous, and they have a complex geometry and uh, slip history. Um, but altogether, uh, the fault uh, the fault zone itself is capable of generating a maximum of a magnitude 7.7. .7. Um, so no uh, damaging events have occurred in the last uh, 20 years. Um, however, there was a damaging magnitude 7.0 near Liwa in uh, southern Sumatra in uh, 1994. Uh, that occurred along or, or near the, the Great Sumatran Fault. Um, so the fault's uh, proximity to the active, so I mean it runs essentially a trench parallel, um, so its proximity to the subduction zone uh, also uh, has implications for uh, coast seismic slip along the Great Sumatran Fault uh, due to uh, mega thrusting in the uh, subduction zone. Um, so in the months following the uh, Great uh, Sumatran Earthquake in 2004, um, this uh, study by McCloskey et al. Uh, 2005, from which this uh, figure is obtained, uh, indicated that the Coulomb stress changes um, in the near vicinity were greatest um, at the northern uh, segment of the Sumatran Fault and also in the southern section of the subduction zone. Um, so one of the immediate worries following the uh, the great, the great earthquake was a, a rupture exceeding magnitude 7.0 on this portion of the, uh, uh, on this segment of the Great Sumatran Fault. Um, no event uh, as of 2020 uh, resulted uh, of the, uh, or at least no damaging event resulted as a res uh, from this, uh, uh, from close seismic slip, but uh, rather instead the uh, uh, magnitude 8.6 uh, event um, farther south uh, was the, uh, was the event that followed uh, closely. Um, so though uh, no damaging event uh, resulted from this, its uh, its implications are it's like its 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 proximity to um, the active subduction zone uh, could uh, influence uh, the timing of a, of a of a large rupture in the future. So if we move farther south, um, so this is so still following the Sunda Java Trench, so we're looking at uh, the island arcs uh, between Bali and Flores here. Um, so if we look at the Sunda Java Trench here, um, so here convergence is uh, basically direct, um, and uh, there's this narrow seismic zone, uh, primarily normal faulting, um, that is uh, that that follows its, its trench parallel. It follows just outboard of the trench. So these are uh, outer, outer rise normal faults. Um, so these occur within the outer rise, just uh, outboard of the trench, um, within the subducting plate prior to it actually uh, entering the subduction zone. Um, and this is due to extension from slab pole. Um, and these events can be both coupled and uncoupled with uh, large mega thrusting events, um, meaning uh, they can either occur independently just due to uh, slab pole um, forces, or they can also occur um, as a result of uh, temporary stress changes following a great mega thrust event. Um, so typically these faults do not uh, generate large or damaging earthquakes. Um, however, on rare occasion, uh, they have done so. Uh, uh, in uh, 1977, actually in this, in this region here, 
um, a massive magnitude 8.3 um, uh, event occurred on one of these outer horizon normal, normal faults and uh, generated an eight meter tsunami that uh, swept across Sumba and uh, nearby Sumbawa, uh, causing some significant damage. Um, so though, uh, though they're not typically take, uh, no, they typically don't uh, generate uh, large magnitude events. Um, it's not entirely out of the question. So they are uh, certainly still a, still a source of seismic risk, um, especially if they are coupled with uh, large mega thrusting events. So still looking in this area, so, uh, Looking at uh, uh, southern Sunda Java region, uh, so this is uh, looking from Java to uh, Natar and to, and to more. Uh, so, in the uh, back arc region, um, just north of the islands of Lombok, um, extending to Wetar, here are two uh, primary fault zones of thrust faulting. Um, so, this is these are back arc thrusts, termed the uh, Flores back arc thrust uh, here in the east, sorry, the west and uh, the Wetar uh, back arc thrust in the east. Uh, so this uh, uh, thrusting in the back arc region is typically um, has been uh, uh, attributed to uh, strain partitioning throughout the uh, crust of the Sunda plate here, uh, due to the ongoing collision of uh, Australian uh, continental margin with the outer band arc, including the uh, island of Timor here. So these uh, these thrust faults are. Uh, very seismically active and uh, do pose uh, significant seismic risk, um, and uh, the most uh, and have been able to uh, generate uh, large and destructive events in the past. Um, the most recent of which was the uh, 2018 Lombok sequence. So this sequence uh, included two magnitude 6.9 uh, events that occurred within two weeks of each other um, in August of 2018 on the uh, beneath the northern shore of uh, the island of Lombok here. Um, occurring on the uh, the Flores uh, back arc thrust, um, both of which uh, both of these events generated significant damage um, and several fatalities as well. Um, so these events uh, occurred as a result of uh, of faulting on actually an older basal fault um, rather than uh, younger, typically blind thrusts that are offshore. Um, so these these events were not tsunamigenic; they did not uh, rupture offshore. Um, and uh, the uh, reason for the rupture has often been has been uh, attributed to uh, magnetism, actually. So pore fluid pressure changes from uh, nearby uh, volcanoes. Um, so this is an interesting example of how uh, um, the interconnectedness of uh, uh, magnetism as well to uh, um, seismicity. Um, so though these were not tsunamigenic. Um, Events in this region, uh, so events that occur along these back arc thrusts have, uh, and, and certainly do have the capability to generate tsunamis. Uh, the uh, massive uh, magnitude 7.9 um, event uh, just north of uh, Flores, so uh, kind of between the Flores and Vetar thrusts, um, generated a massive 20 foot, uh, 25 meter um, tsunami uh, locally, um, which is comparable to. Uh, uh, larger mega thrust events. Um, so, uh, so if uh, so, these uh, thrusts that are often uh, the uh, back arc region here, if they're submerged, they uh, may uh, generate tsunamis in the past, in the in the future. So, if we move farther east um, into the Banda Sea, which we remember is one of the one of the most uh, uh, tectonically and seismically complex regions in Indonesia, if not the world. Um, so focal mechanisms uh, indicate uh, primarily uh, we have uh, uh, compression, so we primarily primarily have uh, thrusting here down here in the uh, Timor Trough where collision is evident, um, and we have uh, uh, thrusting here uh, north of Saram and also on the northern portion of the bird's head. Um, we also have uh, a significant strike slip component uh, that is evident as well um, as uh, the extension. Uh, so here uh, is the, in this location is the oblique convergence uh, between the uh, Australian, Sunda, and Pacific plates. Um, so uh, this convergence has produced a significant uh, sinistral strike slip uh, component, um, so which if we investigate further. Uh, so the sinistral slip um, uh, is primarily accommodated by several 
uh, strikes of fault zones, um, being the Sarong in the, in the north, uh, the Yapin fault zone, kind of in the east of the bird's head here, uh, and the Terrera and Duna the fault zone in the south, and as well as uh, the Saran Fulton Thrust Belt, which is actually highly transpressive. And there are uh, uh, two sinistral strikes with faults, uh, the Kawa and Bobo faults, that run the, across the length of the island here, um, eventually linking up with the um, strong fault, or at least the, the sinistral shear is. Um, so the strong fault uh, is largely seismically inactive for the most part, um, especially in the east. Um, with uh, the majority of its seismic activity more concentrated in the west near Obi and Halmahera, um, and also exhibits uh, complex geometry with uh, uh, several horsetail fault splays, um, which are not shown here, um, except for this uh, more uh, larger prominent northern splay here, which uh, runs uh, south of Halmahera. Um, and the strong fault zone continues to the, uh, to the east from the bird's head to uh, the south Sabu faults, um, which are not pictured here. Um, so it has been determined by, uh, or at least it's been proposed by recent research that uh, the majority of the initial slip today um, is being accommodated primarily by the Yapin fault zone um, and by a, a large step over to the south, the Terrera Iduna uh, fault zone, um, which both of these are very seismically active as we can see from the uh, majority of these uh, focal, mechan focal mechanisms, which do support uh, primarily uh, strike slip motion. Um, and then via a kind of diffuse connection, uh, sinistral, stri sinistral strip, uh, sorry, sinistral slip, <laughs> tongue tied, uh, is accommodated uh, by the surround fold and thrust belt, um, which is transpressive, as was mentioned earlier. Um, and eventually, uh, the sinistral slip uh, is, connects up with the western portion of the surround fold again. Um, so with the, the predominantly uh, kind of the sinistral, or to, uh, sorry, the strike slip to transpressive nature of the region, uh, extension is interesting um, and is uh, primarily uh, located within the RU trough, um, which is uh, near the boundary between, the uh, plate boundary between the uh, Australian uh, plate and the uh, Bandesee microplate. Um, so extension here, so this is primarily characterized by uh, north-south uh, north -south trending uh, or striking uh, Normal fault. And, uh, um, and uh, extension here has been uh, largely attributed to slab rollback um, as a result of the uh, um, arrival of the Jurassic aged embayment on the uh, northern Australian uh, continental margin uh, to the former subduction zone, uh, which uh, attributed to this uh, curved plate boundary here uh, in this uh, curved collisional complex. Um, so extension is also evident uh, in the Ledward Deep as well, um, which uh, this cur the curved uh, this curved uh, part portion here is uh, uh, bounded by a low angle normal fault called the uh, banded detachment, uh, which is not currently known to be seismically active. Um, however, uh, a great deal of slip has been uh, uh, noticed due to the exhumation of mantle material in the uh, Weber Deep. Um, and also an event along this uh, detachment may have caused the 1852 uh, Banda Sea earthquake and tsunami. Um, so in the RU trough, uh, these normal faults are capable of uh, events exceeding magnitude 7.0, uh, the largest of which was a, in recent years, was a magnitude 7.0 in 2010, um, but no damage uh, resulted. So the, uh, um, the, with the several active faults in this region, um, it's not uh, it's not uncommon that large magnitudes, uh, large magnitude and uh, often destructive events can occur. Um, so, highlighted here are some of the uh, more prominent examples. So these are events that are uh, exceeding magnitude 6.0. Um, if we first, uh, so we can investigate each of these uh, one by one. Um, so starting first with the uh, magnitude 7.2 in Talmahera. So this event uh, is uh, like the result of sinistral slip along the uh, strong fault, um, or that kind of like that northern uh, horsetail splay that uh, um, moves up into southern Halmahera. Uh, so this event uh, did cause uh, significant damage and also displaced uh, thousands of residents, um, and also generated a small 20 centimeter tsunami that was that was not uh, destructive. Um, 
farther south, uh, another notable event is the uh, uh, magnitude 6.5 beneath the city of Ambon in western Saram in 2019. Uh, so this event also occurred as a result of sinistral slip um, in, with, on a fault that's uh, likely related to the uh, uh, transpressive region um, that uh, is characteristic of the island of Saram. Uh, and this event also caused uh, very significant damage uh, with uh, thousands of structures uh, uh, damaged. Um, so the uh, a couple of other notable events, so primarily along these uh, very active uh, strike slip fault zones, um, uh, such as the Terraria Iduna fault zone, so, which is likely uh, the source of the uh, 2004 magnitude 7.1 Nibiru earthquake. Uh, which was uh, oblique strike slip. Uh, so this event uh, caused uh, significant damage to uh, structures in Nibiru and uh, also damaged the uh, uh, local airport as well. Um, and uh, this event occurred in November of 2004 and was preceded earlier that year by two uh, events in February, uh, a magnitude 7 and a magnitude 7.3, uh, both of which also caused significant damage. So very active, um, very active uh, fault zone. Um, and also, uh, the Appen Fault Zone uh, likely uh, generated the 2002 magnitude 7.6 event that occurred um, in the western uh, Senderwasi Bay. Um, this event uh, did rupture offshore and uh, generated a three to five meter tsunami. Um, so it's uh, so it's slightly a slightly a transpressive uh, in, in its uh, in its focal mechanism. Um, so these are just a few examples that show um, the the activity um, of these primarily strike slip fault zones in the region, um, accommodating the sinistral slip uh, between the uh, uh, oblique converging, obliquely converging uh, Australian and uh, Pacific plates um, to pose a significant seismic risk. So move farther to the west to uh, to the Wazy. Um, so Sulawesi is very complex also in its tectonic history and its uh, uh, seismicity, uh, with the majority of seismicity being uh, uh, kind of a, uh, along these uh, primarily sinistral strike slip faults, such as the Montaño and uh, Palu Coral Fault. Um, so this location uh, convergence is uh, between the Sunda, Philippine Sea, and Australian plates. Um, and uh, primarily uh, sinistral strike slip, um, however, there is a uh, Compression, especially up here uh, near the active mega thrusting zone um, in uh, the Sulawesi Trench, um, as well as extension uh, that is uh, prominently noticed, especially within the southern portion of the Gulf of Tomini. Um, and uh, a couple other a uh, couple other features here. So the uh, um, thrusting is also active uh, near the solo thrust here, which there are a couple of uh, mechanisms down here which support this. Um, also, the the bit the bitway thrust um, or the bitway thrust um, on the east arm here as well, um, as well as a couple of uh, dextral strike slip faults with the uh, Balantac fault and the Gorontala fault, which uh, currently does not appear to be seismically active, seismically active, um, or could be seismically locked. Um, so if we uh, begin, if we so if we zoom kind of in in this uh, dense region of seismicity here, um, especially uh, near the Palo Coro fault. Uh, so here's kind of what we see. So we've got uh, primarily um, sinistral strike slip uh, being accommodated by the Palu Coro fault and the Sapu Valley uh, fault, um, which the, these strike slip mechanisms seem to uh, uh, support. And there's also several uh, normal faulting mechanisms. Um, so the local local normal faulting uh, may be a result of uh, either transtensional or transtensional bends or uh, the uh, extensional sidewall faults, which are uh, noticed in the uh, Sapa Valley and also in the uh, Palu region, um, and also the kind of these larger, uh, larger scale extension uh, is evident with the south, these uh, normal faults that bound the southwestern portion of the, uh, uh, the Tomini Gulf, as well as the uh, Tambarama Fault, um, and uh, this extension extends into the Tojian Islands here, uh, so primarily. Um, uh, primarily kind of north south or north uh, northeast southwest uh, oriented extension so this uh, larger scale extension is uh, typically attributed to uh, slab rollback um, of the Sula slab which if we remember from part one 
uh, is no longer uh, subducting, uh, but is uh, still being deformed by uh, interactions with the Celibus lab. Um, so the seismic activity in this region um, had clearly has produced some uh, significant and damaging earthquakes in the uh, in the past. Uh, the most notable of which would be the uh, magnitude 7.5 in Palu uh, that occurred in September of 2018. Um, so this occurred as a result of uh, initial strikes of faulting uh, offshore in the shallow uh, Palu Bay um, and uh, generated uh, widespread destruction uh, and also a uncharacteristically large uh, tsunami for a strike slope event, uh, approximately seven meters um, at the highest uh, wave heights. Um, so this uh, this event is a good reminder that uh, crustal faults, um, so even even strike slope faults, uh, uh, can create uh, damaging tsunamis as well. Um, and also uh, a couple other uh, notable events would be a couple of normal faulting events that occurred near the Sapu Valley, uh, both of which did cause some damage. Um, and and as well as a kind of a, a thrust faulting mechanism here near Tojo, um, which it's unclear which uh, uh, what this is related to. Um, so if we move farther to the east, um, so to the east arm, so we see the uh, uh, extension in the Tojian Islands, Islands switches to uh, uh, mainly reverse and uh, dextral strike slip faulting. Um, kind of in this uh, region with, uh, with the bitway thrust and the uh, balance act fault, which is dextral. Um, and uh, between them is this uh, dextral uh, zone of transpression, um, which is characterized primarily by a series of uh, northeast southwest uh, striking uh, dextral strikes of faults that uh, cross cut the island, the Bangai Islands. Um, and also to the south, uh, this initial strip. Sinistral slip is uh, primarily uh, along the South Sabu Fault and then uh, picked up again uh, across the bay um, along the Montano Fault here, which is also clearly very seismically active. Um, so this uh, dextral transpressive zone, um, so a result of the uh, uh, collision of the uh, Bangai Teleabu uh, microcontinent with the uh, east arm of Sulawesi here. Uh, is uh, quite seismically active and has uh, produced um, uh, large events in the past, such as the uh, magnitude 7.6 uh, Bangai Islands earthquake in 2000, in May of 2000. Uh, so this event uh, was the result of uh, kind of dextral uh, uh, strikes of faulting at around 26 kilometers depth and uh, generated a, another large uh, tsunami, approximately six meters. Um, uh, I mean, a large for a uh, strike slip event um, that did cause uh, and then uh, caused pretty widespread destruction throughout Bangai. Um, so another region that is uh, uh, in, has, has a lot of inherent seismic risk. So if we move up to the uh, northeast um, into the Molucca Sea Collision Zone, if we remember from part one, uh, this is one of the most seismically active regions uh, in Indonesia, um, where we have uh, active uh, collision between two uh, volcanic arcs, um, being the Sangi and the uh, Halmahera arcs here, uh, with the majority of seismicity being concentrated along the uh, growing collision complex um, called the, the Central Ridge. Um, and the majority of these uh, focal me mechanisms are uh, reverse uh, and thrust mechanisms. Uh, which we uh, which uh, does make which does make sense um, so once again so close the ocean basin is closing uh, between these as the uh, arcs are uh, colliding and the primary thrust by which this is uh, occurring is the east sangi sorry the uh, yeah the east sangi and the uh, west uh, halmahera thrusts um, which uh, both dip away from the arcs towards the uh, collision complex um, so the, the very dense seismicity here, uh, so this is events uh, 94.0 and above, um, it's not uncommon that uh, larger events, uh, those exceeding magnitude 7.0, um, have occurred in the past, um, such as the uh, magnitude 7.5 in 2007, which did cause uh, damage um, and a few fatalities uh, in northern in northeastern Sulawesi, and the uh, magnitude 7.2, uh, which occurred 
um, in 2009 uh, caused some damage on the uh, island of Karakalong, uh, both of which were caused by uh, uh, shallow reverse faulting. Uh, so though uh, these events uh, were not tsunamogenic, uh, it's probably not uh, unreasonable to think that a uh, tsunami could re could, uh, could occur um, due to uh, thrust reverse faulting here if, uh, um, if, the, if the large enough event occurred. Um, so yeah, so this uh, region is also uh, subject to very inherent uh, seismic risk. Um, so to touch quickly, uh, just moving farther to the north into the Philippines, uh, also very uh, another very seismically uh, active region. Uh, the majority of uh, seismicity is uh, definitely concentrated uh, near the Philippine Trench with uh, thrusting mechanisms most, uh, most common. Um, and then it gets more complicated uh, uh, farther inboard uh, where a significant sinistral uh, strike slip uh, component is noticed along the Philippine Fault. And uh, also several uh, thrusting mechanisms uh, inboard as well. So some of these thrusting mechanisms may be res uh, related to uh, uh, young subduction, such as in the Cotabato Trench and the uh, Sulu Negros Trench. Um, the, that's a uh, that's speculation here, um, and uh, and also due to the serious seismic activity, it's also not uncommon that a uh, large magnitude events can occur uh, here as well, um, such as the uh, 2013 uh, uh, Bohol event, which uh, did cause damage to the island of Bohol here. Um, so uh, yeah, so very. Uh, uh, very seismic, uh, seismically active and uh, seismic risk is uh, inherent throughout the region. All right, so we reached the end here. Uh, so just in quick summary, so the uh, majority of events that occur in Indonesia are uh, shallow, uh, shallow focus, um, and they reflect the uh, broader tectonic motions uh, throughout the region. Uh, they occur by primarily by mega thrusting, um, inch slab, uh, deformation and also by crustal faulting. And they are more than capable of generating large magnitude events um, exceeding magnitude 7.0. Um, of course, some of the damaging events that we observed uh, were not quite this large, some of them even just magnitude 6.5, um, which is uh, still significant. Um, and this combined with the uh, uh, the fact that they're, the shallow events are the most frequent uh, just creates a very significant uh, seismic risk uh, throughout the region. Um, so, so seismic risk for Indonesia comes from multiple sources. Um, and uh, there, that's, uh, that's it for this. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, here are the references. And uh, thank you again, and I uh, hope you have a great rest of your day.